Hello, welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I thought today I might have a go at this puzzle, which has been sent to us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Cryptic Cracking. Um, and the billiards professor <laughs> has sent this to me, and I rather like the idea that there might be somebody who was a professor of billiards. And I also was intrigued by the uh, description of this killer Sudoku as impossible. Um, so I really hope it's not going to be impossible, but I guess we won't know until we try it. Um, here it is. Um, now if you want to have a go, do click on the link below the video. That'll take you to our website where you'll be able to play the puzzle. You should see exactly what I'm seeing. Um, now, let's have a look at how we would do this. The Okay, there's a couple of things I notice when I first look at this grid. One is this enormous 45 cage. As you can't have a repeated digit in a cage in a killer Sudoku, obviously this must be a nine cell cage and must contain all of the digits exactly once. There's a couple of other large cages. That's a seven cell cage, which adds up to 35. So the two missing digits in this cage would have to add up to 10. And the two missing digits in that cage would have to add up to 12. I don't, I don't see how to start using those big cages, but they're certainly, they're certainly fairly interesting in terms of the geometry. Um, right, you can write in the value of that cell. Look. That's using the most important and well-known rule of killer Sudokus, which is that in any 3x3 three three block, oops, any complete column, any complete row of a Sudoku, you've got to have all of the numbers from 1 to 9. So if you add those numbers up, you get to 45. So I know these squares add up to 45, but I also know, if I look at the cage totals, that those 8 cells add up to 41. So that cell must be a 4 in order to make sure that the total for the 3x3 the three three box works. And actually we can do the same trick on that cell look. So again here we've got 8 cells adding up to 36, so that must be 9. We do the same on this in a slightly different way. On those two cages, those two cages add up to 49. So if I know these nine cells add up to 45, that one must be a four. Now, as you can't have a repeated digit in a cage, there's no four in any of those squares. There's no four in either of those squares, all due to this four here. So there's a four in one of these two positions. Now, that four is in a 28 cage. So the other three cells must add up to... 24, and the only way of doing that is with 7, 8, and 9. So those squares must be 7, 8, and 9 in some order. Ah, now look, we've got a 4 and a 9 in column 3, and a 12 cage at the bottom. So this cannot be 3, 9, and it cannot be 4, 8. So the only option left is 5 and 7. That means this 12 cage can't be 3, 9 or 5, 7, so this one must be 4 and 8. And that's not an 8 anymore, so now, uh, now there's 8s in those squares, so there must be an 8 in one of those two positions. Now if that's the case, there must also be a 1, this must be a 1, 8 pair. These squares must be 2, 3 and 6 now, which means these two must be 1 and 5. Now this 4-8 pair in the bottom left hand 3x3 three three block forces this not to be 1-4 into the 5 cage, so it must be 2 and 3. And therefore, oops, these two squares must be 1 and 6. Ah, now, okay, so as there's a 6 in one of those two positions, where can we put the 6 in the top block? We can't put it in the 10 cage, because if we do, we're going to have to put another 4 into the into the box, which is not going to work. So the only position that a 6 can go into is that one, which means that's a 5. This 10 cage now must be 3, 7, because it can't be 1, 9, can't be 2, 8, and can't be 4, 6. 7. 
Now, I think the billiards professor said he got about halfway through the puzzle before getting stuck, so um, let's make it clear that it's a 4, 7, 8 there. Um, so I suspect we're going to be able to go a bit further before we hit the buffers. Now the threes here resolve the three and the two at the bottom. This, these two squares must be two and nine to complete this row. So, sorry, column. So we've got that, that. I think we've done everything we're going to be able to do on the left-hand side without further information from the right-hand side, sort of resolving the ambiguities. Uh, right, this nine, this nine is part of this enormous cage and that means that none of those squares can be a nine and with this nine here that square isn't a nine either so there's a nine either here or here in this middle block uh, we can do some more arithmetic we've got the same pattern going on actually at the top and bottom of the grid look so these seven cells add up to 39 so these two cells have got to add up to six ah okay so this one which is part of a 13 cage can only be a four because it it needs to be big enough that we can make this you know the 13 sum possible and i can't put a five here because of that five so that's a two there as well now as there's a two here there's not a two in these yellow squares. So there's a two in one of these three cells as well. Therefore there's a two, ah, now there's a two in one of these two cells. And there's a four in one of these three cells. Okay, I can't see how to resolve that. Let's just come back up here. Four, two, Ah, yeah, beautiful. This 9 is now very nice, because where can we put a 9 in this block? I can't put a 9 in those two squares, obviously, because they'd have to have a 0 accompanying the 9. I can't put a 9 in the 11 cage, because that's going to lead to another 2. So the 9 must be in the 19 cage, and these two cells obviously see that 9. So there is a 9 here. Ah, okay, so, and now there's a 9, so we've actually got a 249 triple down here. Uh, and these two squares must add up to 10, because there's already a 9 there. They can't be 1, 9, they can't be 2, 8, they can't be 4, 6. So these two squares are 3 and 7. Two means I can actually resolve the two and the nine there. There must be a two up there now. Uh, as there's a two in this 35 cage, there must be an eight also because we know that the two missing digits have got to sum up to ten. Ah, now that can't be a two anymore, therefore, if there's a two here. So the two is locked into one of those two squares now. Ah! Oh, hang on, I can do some arithmetic on those squares. So those seven squares add up to, what's that, 16, 32. So these two squares we've got to add up to 13. And we can't have four and nine. So this is either five and eight, or it's six and seven. Now, can we do anything? with that. Two, four. I'm sure we can, but I'm just being a bit slow about it. Four, seven. Uh, maybe up here we can do more. Oops. These two squares add up to 11. Can't be 2, 9. Can't be 3, 8. Can't be 4, 7. They must be 5 and 6. That means those two squares must be 1 and 8. 
now. Can we go further? This must be five, six, seven, or eight down here. That must be a one or a three. Can't see how that's resolvable. Ah, no, hang on, this can't be 2, 9. This 11 cage, because if I put a 2 or a 9 in here, that's going to put the other number in there, and I've already got the 2, 4, 9 triple, so this square has to be a 4. That's me being slow. That means this is a 2, this is a 3, this is a 9. As we've got the 7 now, these two squares must be 5 and 8, because 6 and 7 isn't possible, and these two squares must add up to 7, must be 1 and 6. 3, 7. Nine. This can't be 6 or 7 anymore. So this is 5 and 8, therefore there's a 5 here and a 7 here. 6. Ah, what am I missing? Um, five, eight. So this is one, four, six here. And we know there's definitely a four. Ah, now as there's definitely a four in here, there must also be an eight. So the missing digits from these cells are either three and nine, or five and seven. Oh, right. Now I've spotted a nice trick. Okay, this square. Let's have a look at this square. In this box, I've limited twos down to these two squares. Let's think about this one. Now, if this is a two, it has quite a profound effect on this box because obviously there couldn't be a 2 in any of those squares. Now combined with that 2 there, look, if this is a 2, that square must be a 2. Now that means, looking at the top, that square would have to be a 2. So the 2 in this 3x3 three three block now is over on this side. Now it can't be here, because there's already a 2 in the cage. And it can't be here, because I started this with the hypothesis that this was a 2. So if this is a 2 here, this square is a 2. Now look at, the, look at that, isn't that beautiful? So this 9 cage either has a 2 here, or it has a 2 there. So this 9 cage is always 2, 7. And if it's always 2, 7, and there's a 7 there, that square is a 7. That is cool. OK, so now, oh, that's cool as well. That gives me an 8 here. This square is not a 2. This square is not an 8. 6. These, this 11 cage now must be 5 and 6 because it can't be 4, 7, 3, 8 or 2, 9. That means that square is a 3. That square is a 1. The billiard professor, I can't tell whether we're ahead of you now or not, but I feel like we've made some good deductions now. now. Ah, now look. There cannot be a 7 in this shape anymore because of this 7, this 7 and this 7. Those three 7s see every one of these cells. So this, so this does not contain a 7 and it doesn't therefore contain a 5 either. Now, that might be interesting. You can see these sevens here and this seven mean the seven is in one of those two positions in this block. Now, as there's no five in those squares, and there's this five here, there's two possibilities. There's either a five in that square, or there's a five in one of those two squares. Now, 
There's also stuff going on with nines. Look, we've got nines dotted around. So there's a nine in one of those two squares as well. Hang on, let's think about this now because actually look, there's a four eight here as well. Four eight one six. So this is two, three, and nine, with the nine being up in one of these two squares. The reason I'm intrigued about the fives is because of if I put fives here they marry up with those squares so if I do put fives there that square has to be a five as well. That forces... Yeah this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Look if I put a five in here I've now got two squares here that add up to 12. So I know that these three squares, because it's part of a 23 cage, must add up to 11. Well, immediately you can see that that square, therefore, cannot be a 9 anymore. So this is a 2 or a 3. Now, if it's a 3, these two squares have to add up to 8. Well, that's in, that can immediately be ruled out because we've got one seven, two six, and three five ruled out immediately. So, in fact, if this is a five, this square must be a two, and these two squares have got to add up to nine. But there's so much ruled out here because you can't have two seven, you can't have three six, you can't have four five. So these two squares are forced to be one and eight. And can you see the problem with that? Have a pause of the video if, you, if, you, if you're not seeing it. But the issue with these two squares being 1 and 8 is not actually with the numbers 1 and 8 at all. It's with that square. This square is a 9. Now if I make these squares 1 and 8, that forces a 9 into this square because there'll be a 9 in one of those two positions in this box. You can see I've got the pencil mark 9s here. But if there's a 9 in this square, where, do I, where can I put my 9 in this box now? Answer, nowhere. The 9 is ruled out of every square because it can't be here and it can't be here if this is a 9. So there is no way that this is 5. That, that is not possible. Um, and that means that's a 5. That means that's an 8. That means that's a 5. Um... Now, if that's a 5, that's quite interesting, because that moves the 5s into one of those two squares um, in this central box, because it's obviously ruling out a 5 from all of those positions. That means there's a 6, 5 at the top. This square cannot be a 5, because we ruled it out. We, we worked out this, this shape cannot be, or cannot contain a 5 and a 7, so that one is a 9 now. And if this is a 9, that square cannot be a 9. And that is massive, because now the 9 goes into this, this shape and accompanies a 7. So we've got two squares that add up to 16 in a 23 cage that's 5 cells large. So the other three squares must be 1, 2 and 4. And what do you know? So that is a 2, 4 double. Oh, this is a good puzzle. This is a good puzzle. Oh, this is going to open up the whole of this side now, look. Two, six, seven, four. Must be a seven in one of those two squares. Ah, oh, that five I could have resolved. Five and one there. Look, this square must be a one because of these ones. And we know there's a one in one of those two squares because we know we had to have one, two, and four along with the seven and the nine. As there's ones here, this square must be a six. One, one, six. That's not 9 anymore. So there's no 1 down here. This square must be an 8. I think that's working. Still need to put 3, 8 and 9 into those squares. And there's an 8 and a 9 there. So that square is a 3. That square must be a 9 because of the 9 down here. That square becomes an 8. With the eights dotted around the grid, look, there must be an eight in one of those squares. 
and we know that there's 10 missing from this shape. Well, we know it's got 2 and 8 in it, we know it's got 3 and 7 in it, and we know it can't contain a 9, so there is no 1 in this shape either, so the 1 must be here. Ah, and there's 1's in one of those two squares, so that square must be a 1. That resolves the 1 and the 7. I think there's a 7 in one of those two squares. This 3 resolves the 3 and the 2 at the bottom. These two squares now must be 4 and 6. With the 6 here, that's resolvable now. This 1 resolves the 1 and the 8. That means this square can't be an 8. There's an 8 in one of these two positions and it must be here, which means that must be a 2. That resolves the 2 and the 4, that resolves the 4 and the 6, that resolves the 6 and the 5. That's a 3 now, that resolves the 3 and the 7. Um, now I still need to put a 5 in here, so that's 5 and 7 like that. 1 and 8 like this. I'm hopeful, I think I think we are done, aren't we? I think, I think it would be quite surprising now if this this didn't resolve itself. Three, and that should be an eight. That looks like it's working. Check, all good. So that is how to do an impossible killer. Now, actually, um, that, that felt like a good puzzle. I enjoyed that. Um, I'd love to know how you found it. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you enjoy these logical conundrums every day, then please consider subscribing. We think that helps the algorithm. And uh, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.